everyone, this is Dosha. Health and technology are two really important things in our lives and I think health technology is something which is going to make a mark in the world and uh, to tell more about it, we have Mr. Anand Dalek over here and he's the advisory board member of Lapsus Technology Services Private Limited and he has a rich experience of more than three decades in IT and IT related service industry. He started his career with uh, the Bull Group and he co-founded Shema Technologies which was India's first venture capital backed company which was later acquired by Emphasis. Uh, he also served uh, as the chief operating officer over there and he subsequently co-founded Code Theatre which was acquired by Acropital Technologies and he was later on the CEO of Dearborn Technologies which was acquired by Global Edge Software. He was then the CEO of Venenor and he currently serves as the advisory board member of many prominent startups. He is also the current chairman and board member of Agatsa Technologies. I welcome Mr. Mutali to be here. Thank you. Uh, my first question to you, sir, is what is health tech and how it supports the healthcare industry? Thank you. Thank you for uh, calling me for this particular session. So, technology is uh, not a new word and healthcare is not a new word. Technology has been there traditionally in one or the other form and health is also there, as you rightly said, in the beginning of uh, the interview itself. Healthcare is uh, one of the most prominent step for all of us. So now from uh, centuries ago, Technology, people are trying to bring technology and health together and uh, serve the people. It's not only serve for human being, even it serves all the livelihoods, taking use of technology and then ensuring that they are on board. I mean, you must have heard there was invention of X-ray, there was invention of so many tools like uh, MRIs, and electrocardiograms, and so on and so forth. The new wave of uh, technology which really came in, which changed the healthcare itself is uh, the invention of electronics, the molecular electronics, which really changed the way really the technology was used by every industry. It's not healthcare, but other industries also. I mean, as you, as you know, if you, you are all the technology people, as you know, every molecule when it makes the movement, there is a transmission of uh, an electrical signal. So now that is what is really used. And if you look at human body, human body is largely nothing but the molecules which are there, which are moving continuously. A small change here, a small change there, changes the way, the way electrical signals are passed. And the technology people really made use of this particular stuff and try to understand what is it in case of a normal human being and what is it in case of uh, what is really a problematic uh, scenario. If any one of the part of the body starts behaving wrongly, immediately the signals behave in a different way. That is what is got by the instruments and the doctors who are the professionals of healthcare and the electronic engineers who are the professionals of electronics industry, both of them came together and try to help the mankind to really understand how exactly we can help the lively beings of this earth and really take it to next stage. So that is that is the beginning of healthcare industry. Now healthcare industry and association of healthcare industry with technology. But in last few years, there is a new way which is really coming up. I mean, you, you talk about uh, the internet and internet of things and you talk about uh, <coughs> these instruments being on the internet, pick up the information of uh, human health and those type of things. And then try to find out some uh, possible good information and try to give it to doctors to make the life of doctors easy. That's how the healthcare, tech, healthcare and technology have come together and try to come up with a new way of things and serve the patients. So that is really where it is. Now it may not be restricted to earlier healthcare means healthcare and technology means it is few instruments and they are all restricted in big hospitals and that is how it used to happen. 
but now it has changed with the new way of, new way of technologies especially with internet of things and especially with the, the digitization of everything now the these type of things are available to human being normal man at the click of a button and at the click of uh, one button on your mobile so that is what is the new way of uh, technology and that is what is called as healthcare technology with digitalization so and in this one <coughs> there are several things which are really happening now there was one israeli company which really came up with this idea for the first time see if you look at traditionally in america or in europe or anywhere one bed in a hospital is extremely expensive now what happens so they cannot keep patient for very long time in the hospital and make the hospital bed to be blocked for the, for that patient and also they cannot uh, make these people to spend more money so what they started coming up with is how can i use the mobile technology or technology wherein i can transmit the signals pick it up somewhere pass it on to a call center which picks up the information alert the doctor as well as alert the patient saying that this patient is undergoing such such and such uh, problem you please attend then immediately the call center will be alert the doctors doctors will look at those images and pass it on to near the hospital this patient goes to near the hospital and gets this was first time tried by a company from israel and then they implemented these things in few places in usa and i am very lucky to have what associated with a company called american medical response it's a mobile uh, hospital i mean whatever that though that was the first time uh, the equipments were put on the ambulance and they were moving and they really helped the mankind so that is how the healthcare technology which was traditionally going to hospital and looking at everything started getting a change and i am very lucky to get associated with that and from there using mobile technology to serve the healthcare industry has come an extremely long way and that is what we will be talking about in few minutes from now uh, so what are the problem areas uh, which health tech really addresses in the industry see if you look at the problem areas uh, it, it it's very difficult to list the number of problems what the, the healthcare technology industry really addresses there are uh, lots of problems which are there and especially if you take uh, in the population of india and the number of doctors who are number of doctor professionals who are available to serve uh, these patients the ratio is uh, mind boggling mm -hmm. now in urban side if you take one doctor they will serve about 1700 patients mm -hmm. one doctor serves about 1700 patients and if you take rural side it is 1 is to 60000 60000 patients are served by one doctor now how can one doctor professional serve the 60000 people and how one doctor in urban area can serve the 70000 it's it's not the question of money money is there with everybody mm -hmm. but these facilities of healthcare are not made available to each and every individual that is what is the biggest problem and this is what many companies many technology companies started uh, to uh, understand and under, how to address this particular stuff is what is uh, being taken so <clears throat> which is in a single word i can say there is lack of accessibility to the patients to the true doctor professionals this is the first problem which the healthcare technology companies uh, started addressing second as i talk lack of uh, shortage of professionals shortage of professionals be it a doctor be it a nurse be it other technicians who are really addressing the healthcare technology issue there is a tremendous shortage of uh, professionals that is the second thing which the healthcare technology companies are trying to address then uh, third thing is if you look at uh, the urban hospitals today or even in the sophisticated hospitals what we really call as multi specialty hospitals 
So common man cannot really afford the facilities which are there because it costs a lot. So that means what I can say is it becomes healthcare is becoming an expensive affair because of uh, the advent of technology and because of uh, advent of so many costly equipments. So everybody can cannot afford it. So this is the third problem which is really existed and which is what uh, modern tech, healthcare technology private companies are trying to address. And the uh, fourth extremely important thing is the awareness itself. It's extremely difficult uh, for, I mean forget about rural people, even in urban places and we keep joking about uh, people and saying that okay you have got just pain and it is direct everybody says it is uh, the SDD problem. Mm -hmm. So that is a kind of awareness what we have really got. Mm -hmm. This is one from the perspective of the consumers. Mm -hmm. Second also look at the uh, understanding of different terminologies with different diseases which are there, there are thousands of diseases which are there mm -hmm. and which are not available to common man. How exactly it has to be done? This is another thing what healthcare technology companies are trying to bring together and bring that awareness uh, uh, there. Earlier, if uh, if you, I mean it may be very late for you, but at least you are all the youngsters and you know many things about the things, uh, but uh, old people, old people like me or uh, your founder Rana Tata, so we all used to have what is known as a family doctor concept. So anything happens to us, quickly go to this doctor and that doctor will check us and then finally say, this is your problem, give some tablets and finally it used to go. Now today, with the, num the, with the increase of population and uh, the less number of uh, doctors who are there, the family doctor concept is really going. So anything happens to you, quickly you'll have to go to a multi-specialty hospital, get yourself checked, they will give at least five to six tests and finally arrive at a decision. So that means there is no one place where your history of your total health history is available in one single place. Mm -hmm. At least it used to be there with the family doctor. Absence or vanishing of family doctor concept itself is another thing uh, what these healthcare technology companies are trying to address. So these are, these are the things which are really brought on to a platform which is digitized and which is made available to everybody so that at least uh, everybody is trying to get whatever healthcare facilities are there and try to use of that and then uh, that's what I am seeing the uh, use of the IoT technologies and those type of things are really doing to it. Uh, sir, uh, how do startups really exist in this environment in this industry? Okay, anyway, you can change your question a little bit. It's not startup, healthcare startups. How, how do the healthcare startups really are uh, there and what they are doing uh, specifically to this one? As I listed about uh, six, five, six problems or seven, eight problems. Mm -hmm. So now they are trying to take up, each, each one of these startups are specializing some themselves into certain areas. And now one was, awareness. Now if you take the LabSense technology, there is a particular uh, program, what LabSense technology has built is HealthView. Now HealthView is a wonderful platform. The young content engineers, content people have put, collected all the articles which are there in the web or in the Google and put something together and what is known as the HealthView. This is accessed by many people who are there on the, the health view, understand what is really happening. This definitely helps in bringing the awareness of what is really happening to you and what is happening in the medical technology. This is one thing, what startups are doing. An important thing I said is uh, shortage of professionals. And then access to these professionals who are less in number. That is what many of these startups are doing. I mean, if you take a company called Facto, which is in existence for the last eight years, and we should be giving a huge credit to that particular company, which faced all types of adverse conditions and still put a platform, which brings doctors 
and patients together on one platform. So they have got what is known as an appointment uh, module, mm -hmm. which really makes the consumer to have an application mm -hmm. and then uh, download the list of doctors, search the doctors who are near to you, take an appointment and go. That means by sitting, the patient by sitting at uh, his place or her place can find out which doctor he can go and then what type of appointment he can get and what type of facility he can get. All those things are made available by this company. Followed by that, other companies came, other startups came like OTI is another, Liberty is another and then very prominent uh, Kolkata based uh, Lab Sense Technology another company which has come up with uh, its Geo platform which is really making some differentiations to the platforms which are available and giving more facilities to the consumers. Yeah. Now this is B to C, mm -hmm. business to consumers. Now it is not stopping there. There are some startups who are really addressing it from B to B. What is B to B? Now the doctors and doctors being in a place is one part of the business and then these diagnostic centers, clinics, they are the other business. Now these platforms are connecting these two entities together mm -hmm. and they are trying to give business from one to other. That is what is another thing which is really happening on these platforms and trying to bring uh, these two connected well together and that is what is being helped to the consumers, normal people like us. Mm -hmm. So that is another thing which is really happening. Mm -hmm. The next thing is, uh, as I told, See, family doctor earlier used to maintain all your history and say, this is what happened to you 10 years back, okay, this is what happened to you last year, and this may year it may happen to you. Now, that means there is a record of all these things with your doctor, family doctor. Mm -hmm. Now, how are these startup companies doing? All these startup companies are doing with what is known as electronic mm -hmm. medical records. You are maintaining the patient history or at least you are providing the consumers who are coming to your platform giving a facility of maintaining the history okay six months back you had this problem and this is the treatment which was given so now to now we have come now this is your problem and this is your history and this is what this is the doctor what you can go and he will quickly look uh, after the patient gives access to doctor he will look at history mm -hmm. and then he will quickly come up with uh, what is really known as a particular uh, diagnostics and then provide medicine accordingly so it is extremely important there in, in your medical record you are also maintaining what is known as uh, to what medicine you are allergic mm -hmm. that also will be there that means doctor doesn't have to reinvent the wheel mm -hmm. see there is a problem like this he doesn't have to give one more test to see that this is, uh, they call it as cultural test, they call it as cultural test. They don't have to do it again. Okay, it's already there in your record that this particular medicine or the, this group of medicine, you are allergic. So he will quickly change that and then uh, prescribe another medicine. So that means your entire history of your medical record is what these platforms are making it available to the common man. See, these are some of the examples of what really the healthcare startups are really doing to the technology. We using the technology they are providing to companies. But uh, are there any uh, challenges in the future for this industry, the healthcare industry in particular? Yes. Any any industry which is new, we face tremendous amount of challenges. That is what you would have uh, learned your uh, learned in your. Uh, engineering or your medical business like that even in um, healthcare technology industry there are lots of challenges first challenge is <coughs> this is life related and the industry is there from centuries to the it, it takes very long time for any change to be accepted by people as well as the professional so which means the growth of the healthcare startup companies is not at a speed wherein Flipkart or uh, Snapdeal or any of those things grow. No, who are dealing with the life of a 
patient. So it takes a lot of time for the industry to accept the technology, industry to accept the way the technology is being used for healthcare. That is where the company's growth will be very slow. I will give again an example of two companies. Let us take again the example of Practo. Sorry, though I am talking for lab science, but I am using lab uh, Practo because Practo is in uh, the industry for last eight years now. See, for them to reach to this stage of uh, acceptance, it has taken them eight years. Even with all these things, after having burned so much of money to put everything in place, even today the company is not in a break even position to saying that I am earning money and I am using that money to grow. It is not possible. That means growth is extremely slow. That is how the industry is. That is uh, first challenge which is there. Now, we are also dealing with uh, the doctor professionals and when we are dealing with doctor professionals, they are all governed by the rules and regulations of the land. See, you know, rules and regulations and the policies which the, the federals or the government has really put in. So now, today, even those will take a little more time than what is expected to change and help these type of te technology companies. So that is the second challenge what uh, the healthcare startup or companies are uh, really facing. <coughs> then, uh, third very prominent uh, challenge for the healthcare startups is the mentors and advisors who are the professionals of the industry. It's lack of aware, lack of availability of these type of mentors. Yeah, there are mentors who are there from information technology company who will think it from in information technology perspective rather than think it from a healthcare perspective. Now, we need to attract or we need to have more and more mentors and advisors who are there from the healthcare industry. Then it becomes more meaningful for these companies to really put up a platform and then go to the common man with the solution. So that is another thing which is uh, a big challenge for these companies. Mm -hmm. Then fourth thing, of course, funding is another thing. Yeah, there are definitely a lot of VC companies there are a lot of angel investors who are really ready to come and invest in these companies. But you will have to come up with a proper plan and you should be extremely disciplined in putting it up uh, a plan together and then go and meet these people who, who have got this funding. What is important is today many of the healthcare startup companies they start thinking about a particular problem and get fund and with that only they are happy. So they will continue with that. No. See, I am coming from an industry wherein I have grown the companies. I tell all the entrepreneurs one thing. Think big. Don't think small. Think big and think big what more you can do to healthcare industry. Only when you think that way then you, your platform can be better and your services can be better and you can do a good job. So, so this is what I tell your lab science technology. Don't restrict yourselves only to Kolkata. There are other places. Go to North East, go to Gauhat, go to Joraj, those type of places and address industry there also. Now look at Pacto. They have restricted quite a bit themselves to Bangalore. Very strongly, same thing is happening with uh, lab science. They are restricting themselves quite heavily to Kolkata. We have to come out of that. We have to think big, address bigger market and uh, grow fast. So this is another challenge which is really being faced by all the healthcare startups. Uh, my last question to you would be, uh, what is the one right Um, maybe very very difficult question. The question appears very simple, but answer uh, will be very difficult for me to tell. It's not just one point. It has to be multiple points which really drive for these startup companies to become very successful. So definitely yes, the market is very huge. There are some numbers, some numbers 
which are very mind boggling the industry size in uh, india is as of last year it was 20 billion dollars and it is expected to grow to 280 billion dollars by 2020 that means there is enough business what we definitely will have to do and what is my advice to startup companies is be innovative and have the patience and uh, really come up with uh, a platform which addresses all the problems faced by other startup companies and all the problems which are faced by uh, common man for you if we can really put ourselves in the shoes of common man and address what problems he is facing then we can get startup company can be extremely extremely successful one thing we should bear in mind there is no shortcut to become successful absolutely no shortcut so you definitely will have to have that patience you definitely will have to come up with different ideas one idea after 6 months you may feel that it is not working yes it is not working let us change that idea or twist that idea in some other way so that it is uh, address it is addressing the problem that we have got so that way we have to be extremely innovative and then be with be with that innovation for a long time and then you will be very successful thank you sir it was lovely having you over here and i thank you all for being here and watching this video please stay with us and uh, connect to you at facebook twitter linkedin and youtube so this is goodbye from me and mr mutani thank you thank you